Hello my friends and welcome back for another episode of F1 2019's career mode. Last week we were in Great Britain for our team's home race. This week we are headed out to Hockenheim for the German GP and our engine manufacturer's home race. We've had a run of a couple wet races so far, starting with the pouring rain of Austria and then the mixed conditions in England. And we are going to have some more rain this week. Uh, we've got an overcast but dry qualifying, but we have mixed conditions during the race. Um, dry in the early part, then goes from a light to heavy rain. Um, we are still kind of plateaued as we have several major performance updates uh, waiting to come into play. I believe we have three of them. Uh, so Toro Rosso still making some, uh, some ground on us. But we should have some huge developments coming in for our race next week in Hungary. Hopefully the downforce will help during that very, very wiggly, windy track. As we're starting to hit the point of the season um, where we're going to have to be uh, very careful with managing our engine component life and uh, quality. So what I'm doing here is throwing on some of the older components for the practice sessions where I don't need a... Uh, tons of performance just enough to kind of get around the track get a feel for the car um, and then we will make swaps before practice or uh, after free practice three before qualifying to get our race uh, sets on for for the uh, internal combustion components or power unit components um, obviously gearbox rules you're allowed you have two gearboxes you have one that runs um, free practices one and two and then your event gearbox, which runs free practice three, qualifying, and the race. And that you one you have to use for six events um, before taking, before you get a free new gearbox. Obviously, um, as we've done already this season, we take if you take a new one, you take a penalty. Um, so after the first race, about 17% damage. So we'll see how it may be borderline for uh, getting through this one. Welcome back to qualifying, where we're waiting for the lights to turn green in the pit lane to signify the start of the session here at the Hockenheim ring for this weekend's German Grand Prix. I want to talk briefly about the strategy in these qualifying sessions. Anthony Davidson, how can a driver adjust their approach to gain those critical extra tenths of a second? Well, qualifying isn't about adjusting your approach necessarily. It's more about trying to repeat a low fuel run that you've practiced prior to this session. You're looking for perfection on the lap, and that's hard to achieve if you're trying something new. There are some variables that can stand in your way, however. Track position or unexpected yellow flags, for example. Coupled with ever-changing track conditions, it's important to be out there at the right moment. But as a driver, you have to try and ignore these distractions and just keep your mind focused on that one perfect lap. All right, so here we are jumping in our first qualifying lap at the Hockenheim ring. For a little course tour, turn one is very tricky. Um, it's a very quick, little snappy right-hander. As you can see, it's kind of easy to get loose. You're down the next DRS straight into the heavy braking zone where you're down to second, third gear for that tiny hairpin. And then you get through the left-hander and onto this long DRS straight away. I mean, it's a big sweeping left-hander, but it may as well be straight. And you are down into a tight, tight hairpin, all the way down into first gear. Get the car to rotate around, and you've got a nice straight run out to get back on the throttle. A flat out little right-hander before our next braking zone into another tight left-hander. That sets us up for a little bit of an S section here before we get on a short straight and ready to snap into the stadium area through this right-hander deceptively long you always feel like you're about to be out of that right hander but you have to wait just a little longer before you get on the throttle and then down the final two corners where this year in the German GP on the left there that little drag strip was a source of serious problems for a lot of drivers as it rained during the real race and that thing got very very slick a lot of people uh, lost their race on this this section right there but so we put up a modest time with our first lap. Um, we go out for our third flying lap and we go up into P3. 
P6. By the time the uh, session ends and all the times shake out, we fall, drop down to P10, but we only need to be top 15 to make Q2. So here we are out on the track, um, finishing up our first flying lap on the soft compound tires in Q2. And as of right now, we are fourth fastest. So as we uh, waited during the session, we uh, didn't have any other fresh soft tires. We fell down to tenth. So we're right on the bubble there. So we hop out onto uh, medium tires and work our way through our outlap. After uh, our outlap, we fall into eleventh. So we are in the drop zone. We need to pick up another spot if we want to make Q3. And we're going to have to do it on the harder compound attire. Not ideal. Um, uh, we already already have a mistake to the first corner. You can see that time delta we're just losing. We're going to push and see if we can't make up any ground anywhere else. So, And a big mistake. We're way too hard on the throttle. We spin the car around and just like that, our lap is toast. The qualifying session is over. And we miss out on Q3 by one spot. Which is a bummer. Um, we had been making Q3s pretty decently the last couple of races, but here we are uh, in trouble. Good afternoon and welcome to a place that is very special to us all in the Formula One community. It's the Hockenheim Ring, home of the German Grand Prix. Always good for a close scrap is Hockenheim. Think back to Alonso, Ricardo, Vettel as recently as 2014, and I'm expecting some more strong racing today. With average lap speeds of around 130 miles per hour, the Hockenheim Ring is a quick circuit with a lap distance of 2.8 miles around 17 corners. The main DRS zone through Parabolica leads into the hairpin for the best overtaking opportunity on the track. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Let's talk about old timer. As with all the drivers at this level, they have a lot of ambition, but Formula One's a daunting step up from any other series, so expectations are high right from the start. And this is something that has ended the career of many a young driver, as that leap up to Formula One proves to be too much. But luckily in this case, I'd say they're doing a good solid job, and the risk the team took in signing them is definitely starting to pay off. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Vettel, Valtteri Bottas, and Gasly, Holkenberg, Raikkonen, Weber, and Daniel Ricciardo. Oldtimer, Perez, Devon Butler, and Norris, Magnussen, Grosjean, Alexander Albon, and George Russell, Stroll, and Carlos Sainz will start from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. This is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Let's give them a race worth watching. So we have that Mercedes power unit in the back of our car. Obviously, we swapped off of those worn engine components onto some slightly fresher ones for the race after the practice. But so. On the plus side of us missing Q3, it means we are no longer bound by the Q2 tire rules, um, where if you make qualifying three, you have to start the race on the tires you set your best qualifying time in Q2 with. So it would have been the softs had we uh, made it through to Q3, or maybe the mediums if we had done it on that final lap. But this allows us a free choice of tire. So what we're doing here, um, what my thought and strategy is, is Let's pop on the hards and let's see if we can't run one set of tires all the way to the rain um, because a lot of other cars are going to have to make a stop before they're switched to wets. So we're going to be kind of uh, taking a gamble. Obviously, we're not we're still not as strong in the wet as uh, we are in the dry. I haven't had a lot of practice with that um, even still. And, you know, the AI is just damn good. So that's the strategy we're going with. So. A lot of different strats out there as you see there's a soft to hard and a medium all starting three spots from each other but on the grid the lights out and here we go down the front straight into turn number one as stuff gets bunched up and Raikkonen gets turned in I have no idea how I managed to dodge that wreck that was terrifying 
He went around right in front of me and I just took to the escape road. Off to the runoff and somehow survived. But here we are. We've jumped two positions already in the ninth place because of that uh, spin. And as a result, also, the field is pretty spread out. Normally, the for the first lap, especially with these slower quarters, the field's still pretty bunched up. But in this case, that bit of a wreck, uh, luckily it doesn't look like anybody has been DNF'd by that. Just a little bit of a spin. Um, I think if you check the main map, you can see the kind of burgundy dot of, yep, Kimmy, right at the back of the grid there. So nobody's out. I don't know about uh, wing damage for any of those guys. Honestly, I wasn't paying attention. I was in pure preservation mode. And so we've got pretty good track position where we're at right now. Um, a strategy I hope is going to work out for us. It's just a matter of uh, turning good lap time, seeing if we uh, can hold our position, maybe even chase down the group in front of us um, before the rain comes. So here we are jumping to the start of lap five. We are nice and holding position there. Um, in front of us, our teammate, Lucas Weber, has old teammate, has gotten through uh, Nico Hülkenberg, the two Germans battling it out at their home Grand Prix. And we have some wheel spin coming out of that slow corner and puts us under attack. Um, the slow corners, we just kind of stepped on it a little hard and we've got Lando Norris going down the inside of us and, and same with Sergio Perez, we go three wide into the braking zone of the hairpin and we are the loser this time we drop two positions back but we get great traction out of the hairpin compared to Sergio Perez and we get right back past him through that fast right hander and we are going to jump back on to the tail end of Orlando Norris and see if we can't get that position back from him as we are now sitting 10th still just barely in the points but we are only about half second off the tail end of him not our best run into the stadium section there but we are still uh, in striking distance. Now, he and the pairs are both on the faster tire, the medium, and it is still kind of early in the race, so we'll see if they start to fall off, if maybe we get a chance on the longer life tire okay, to uh, get it back. Now. And I also see the first uh, cars kind of making the pit stops. Um, Miko Hülkenberg first to dive in on his started the race on the soft so we will likely see the next few people uh, jumping in to uh, battle with us and also grab some fresh tires in the dry uh, again and a long break is a little bit of a lock up on the way in nothing uh, it's just at the last little phase, so that one doesn't affect us as much as a lockup in the earlier portion of it. But we're managing to hold, but we have a lockup right as we start to turn in, and that sends us wide, and now we've got to go side by side with Perez and battle him down this little straight. We are kind of squeezing him out, but he is just slamming into our side pods. We managed to uh, hold him off as we enter the stadium section and keep our position right in front of him. You can see there's a little bit of a, a group forming up on our tail. Um, but we're mostly kind of split out. and We are continuing to battle with uh, racing points throughout this whole season. Uh, earlier on, we were fighting with uh, driver number two, Lance Stroll still is classified as one of our rivals right now um, as far as results and points but now we seem to be uh, fighting with uh, Sergio Perez over the last couple of races so there he goes he's gonna go ahead and take to the inside in the braking zone use that softer compound that little bit more grip and just outbreak us into the hairpin but we managed to get another good run out of the uh, hairpin on him and we dive to the inside of that flat out right hander and get the spot back from a little bit of a lock up but this time we uh, cover off the exit so he isn't able to swing down the inside of us
back down through the stadium section. Mirrors full of pink as Sergio Perez is in there. You can see we've now jumped up to uh, sixth position as a few more cars have uh, made their pit stops. And it looks like we've got a couple of the top teams rolling out the pit lane right now. We jump all the way up to third because of it. But likely those uh, top teams will start chewing their way through the field. They just have a tremendous pace. But as you can see there on the mini-map, we've got the pink and orange dots of Perez and Signs behind us. But then the two blue-green dots of the Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas. And you can see kind of in the uh, background there a bright red Ferrari and a couple of Red Bulls back in the train fighting with uh, the Haas and the other racing points. So they're going to start uh, trying to chase us down, I am sure. We're still uh, fighting with Perez over and over as we uh, go into the stadium section another time. Um, we have the clean air, so it allows us a little better uh, front end grip, a little better traction. But on these harder tires, it's definitely a uh, car is very understeery. The fronts are even by putting a, putting a lot of temperature in them, getting them in their operating window. It's still the car doesn't want to nose quite in on these hard tires as much as I would like to. But he gets a good run out of the final corner. He is down the inside. We have to go wide into the runoff around uh, turn one as he just clipped the apex and forced us wide, and we have to kind of. Uh, Take a non-ideal line and we give position. We have a little bit of a bump there on, uh, looks like, uh, was that Hamilton? Yeah, it was Hamilton. Um, as we weren't expecting to be right up our inside there. And you can see the first raindrops starting to fall as we have a run on Perez down into the braking zone of the hairpin. We are going to go around the outside since we know we can't outbreak him down the inside. He's a little quicker. But now we have to uh, try and make it down around the outside of this run. But not quite enough. We, uh, In spite of our better exit off the hairpin, we aren't quite able to get him. He is kind of uh, run off in the distance as we jump to lap 11. Hamilton gets by us, and now we are under attack from Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. And it's just a matter of us trying to hold them off as long as we can. We get a pretty solid exit, put Vettel behind us for the moment, and the rain continues to fall. We're jumping to lap 13. The track did not get wet nearly as fast as it did in uh, Great Britain last week, so we are running our third lap on the uh, dry tires as this track still has some decent levels of grip. We've managed to bother uh, Vettel for a little bit, but uh, Lewis Hamilton has rushed off into the distance. And uh, now his teammate Valtteri Bottas is going by us. We have an almost four wide moment as uh, the Red Bull of Max Verstappen kind of sticks his nose as we were already three wide down that back straight, but we go two by two through the hairpin. Vettel is by us. Valtteri Bottas is uh, the loser in that situation. He falls down behind the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. We have a little bit of a lockup as now that we're starting to feel the track getting nice and wet. Not quite enters time yet, but it's, it's getting very close. We've got a great chance of taking the position. Good chance of taking the position. He's in a Ferrari and he just like pulled a full second on me in one sector. Come on, Jeff. Be realistic. There's Verstappen down the inside of us. We are wheel to wheel battling. He uh, backs out through that S section is just a recipe for disaster, uh, trying to go side by side through that area. Definitely don't want to uh, over stick your nose into that corner. So we jump just one lap ahead and uh, we are diving into the pit lane. Let's see. Uh, a lot of people coming in now to, to grab those inter tires. We're kind of part of the first group to go on the inter. A nice, quick, clean stop, and we are back out in front of uh, the Mercedes. And we actually jumped a position on our old old teammate Lucas in the uh, Alfa Romeo. There. So we uh, just kind of settle in, and now it's time to just pump laps in in the wet and so we actually take a big jump all the way up to lap 23 and the track is getting very wet the rain has gotten harder we have a lot of wheel spin coming out of the 
that corner down straight, so we are going to be under attack from uh, Lucas Weber down this straight. You can see uh, the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas out ahead of us. We had to kind of let the uh, faster cars through. We locked up down into the hairpin, got sent way wide, and uh, lost the position. We're in a nice little uh, train of F2 rivals. Uh, my old teammate Lucas ahead of us and Devin Butler right behind. We jump one more lap ahead, lap 24. We're going to be coming in this lap as the rain is heavier and heavier. It's time to go on to full wets. And Devin Butler dives down the inside of us. We hold him off down the first part. We get down a long side. And he just pits us. He goes right into our left rear tire, sends us around. Safety car is called out. And we have to hustle our way to get the car turned around and rumble over the grass to uh, dive into the pit lane to slap on the full wet tires now in this situation he had absolutely no claim to that corner he was alongside and I left him room during the previous corner but I got a better exit and he was barely near my uh, back left tire and he just didn't leave he didn't back out and spun me around so lost him ton of positions we're on to the full wets now luckily that safety car was called out I guess because it uh, slowed down the field and allowed me to get not lose as many positions on the uh, the pit stop but I'm all the way down to 15th now okay let's get ready to go racing again the safety car and, uh, is in this lap when the field, we were, uh, remember, the field was extremely no spread out um, we're up flags. to lap 28 and the safety lap. car is coming in this lap We've kind of reeled in our teammate Lucas, and man, is he going slow. Like, he's left a huge gap to the car in front uh, on the restart, which is just unfair. And as a result, he just gets to power off whenever he wants and open a gap right up on us. The green flags are waved, flag. and it's time to go racing again. So here we are on the full wets in a rainy, rainy Germany. Let's see if we can't catch up to our old teammate and get some positions back and uh, hopefully salvage salvage some of this result. We were running, you know, essentially in the top 10 after pit stops had shaken out. And uh, then we were just absolutely trashed by Devin Butler, who has a history of it. We're going to go ahead and jump to lap 31, and we're lap 14 now as we have a DNF of Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull. So we get a free position there, and that's what that caution's all about. But yeah, Devin Butler's been a problem for us before. Um, back in Formula 2, of course, you have that nice scenario where he chops off your front wing and picks up the penalty. Um, I was kind of hoping they'd give him a penalty this time around, but... It doesn't look to be the case, even though he just straight up took me out. So we've uh, fallen back a fair bit. Um, our teammate, George Russell, who we've been out racing and out qualifying pretty much every step of the season, seems to have a pretty good handle of the car on the wet because he has been just absolutely chasing us down lap after lap. And now uh, with a, about three laps left to go in the race, he is right up on us. To the takes a little look to the inside down the uh, turn into the stadium section thinks better of it doesn't quite go for it but we run a little wide through the uh, left hand left hander in the stadium section and uh, to really ease out of the throttle to make these last two corners A very, very slippy track. Very tough to get on the power. This, this turn one right-hander is terrifying in the wet. And, and just again, on the throttle a little early. Steps out the rear end. The teammate now looking down the inside of us. We're going to go ahead and give him the room. But we have a little bit of a better exit. We actually have to back out because he lifts the throttle there. If he wasn't there, we could have had an even bigger run. But... We lift out because we don't want to take our own teammate out. We get a good run down the, uh, the back straight. And uh, we are side by side into the braking zone of the hairpin. And 
As we've uh, made it our tradition, we go around the outside to get a good exit. But uh, so does he. So we are side by side once again. We kind of squeeze him a little bit to the inside and then give him the space as we go around that fast left-hander. Not quite, uh, or right-hander. It's not quite flat out anymore now that it's wet, but it's still a small lift. And uh, we are having quite the battle with our teammate here as he is swapping left right looking to try and uh, find a way past us as we have some slow exits through some of these corners but we managed to uh, hold position I wouldn't say we're being dirty we're just being tough we are uh, definitely using the slipperiness to our advantage a lot of times into the braking zones I'm just kind of setting myself up in the middle of the track and waiting till he makes a move and then I move the opposite way to uh, allow him space but I'm not I'm not committing to either an inside or an outside line to a lot of the uh, corners where he's about to have an attack on us. But we get out onto the outer curbing there, the exit curbing, which is definitely wet. Not a uh, good racing line move there. And we lose a ton of traction, and he again gets a good run down the inside of us. But we manage to uh, get slightly ahead and pinch it off and not allow him by us once again. We have two laps of fuel got about two laps left to go in this race here we've only got a couple more trips through this hairpin we uh basically power slide our way around the hairpin that time just locked up the rear tires more than the front so the back end just kind of outraced the front and it was just a matter of uh saving the car through that whole entire hairpin which was kind of fun but uh not ideal and there you can see just how much steering input i have into some of these corners and how much the car just doesn't want to turn. So, as understeery as the car was in the uh, dry, the wet has made it ten times worse. And it really, uh, I'd love to be able to add a bunch of front downforce to really get the front end to bite in. But we need the straight line speed and the, uh, the car just doesn't like that kind of imbalance. Um, because it is able to uh, oversteer on, on power, but... It's still a little little too understeer. I mean, I would like to have a, rather have the car, you know, point the nose to the corner and then manage the back end uh, traction with the throttle as needed. But like I said, I'd much rather have the car actually pointing in the right direction rather than turning the wheel and running off the outside of the track. An oversteery car is uh, when driven on the limit faster than an understeery car. And the current Formula One cars with the uh, front wing redesigns and the, the rules changes there has created a very understeery car. There's our teammate once again down the inside of us into the hairpin. We kind of squeeze him a little bit against the uh, apex there, but still quite enough space. And there's uh, one of our Racing Point buddies has kind of caught up to us now. As we are not exactly uh, the fastest battle on the grid. In, a, in the lowest performance uh, index car, which I'm aware of the performance index isn't quite everything. Um, it's just kind of a rough ballpark. But uh, we are in the essentially the lowest car, and uh, I am still just not very good in the wet on this track. I kind of uh, psyched myself out with the really good result in the wet at uh, Austria. And I thought, oh, maybe I've got a handle in the wet. And then, of course, uh, England and now Germany have brought me back down to earth. But we uh, managed to uh, finish P13 in this race. Not uh, quite where we wanted to be when we were running inside the points earlier. But could have been worse. Could have been worse since we spun out. Ferrari have really pulled it out of the bag today. It's a great win. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, and a stunning win for Ferrari. And there you go. You have the uh, top three teams on three steps of the podium there. Um, pole winner 
Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari also won the race, so he managed to uh, complete both strategies there. Lewis Hamilton again on the, the second step of the podium, continuing to grow his uh, driver's standing lead. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Lance Stroll certainly put in an impressive performance today. No doubt his team and fans are extremely proud. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Great work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. There wasn't much between you and Lucas by the finish today. Yeah, so I went with, uh, he has a great team and car behind him, but so do I. Did you feel comfortable uh, in the wet weather I mean, today? Life wouldn't be fun if it didn't test you every now and then, but I'm going to be honest, I'm getting a little tired of the rain. Been three races in a row now. I, I really just want well, to get everything. back to, uh, to some dry running and really, you know, see how the car and how I can perform in that. But, you know, the wet is part of it. But, you know, all strung together is kind of it's getting a little tiring, especially since the AI is so strong in the wet right now. But we get an okay haul of uh, resource points over the weekend. So we'll have uh, something to work with. It should be 1,200. should get us about a major upgrade. Which I think we are still Excellent walled off today. on. Finishes we don't have like any that look good on your contract reviews. purchase because we're all of our uh, currents are uh, majors. Let me take a quick peek at the messages. Met all the race targets. But of course, Carl always wants more. I'm going to take a quick peek at the press clippings to see if uh, anybody's got anything to say about us. Lucas has a little, little peep, but nothing big. So let's hop into uh, the R&D tree. And let's see, we basically have uh, two choices. We have either the major upgrade of the engine cover weight redistribution, or we have our um, oil pressure pump something involving the oil pressure with the uh, power unit upgrade but again power unit is still very strong so we're going to go ahead and purchase uh, another chassis upgrade see if we can't catch that up as well so we have three in development that should be there by Hungary and then one that should be there by Belgium which will be just after the summer break and uh, will be the first of our real power tracks, but we have Hungary to make it through, which is a very tight, twisty circuit. Um, definitely not a power unit circuit, and we are really going to have a tough time with the our poor arrow and uh, chassis being at the back of the grid. So see what we can do there. But that's where we'll be uh, headed next week to the Hungaro Ring for the last race before the summer break. But uh, thank you for joining me once again. I will catch y'all a little later.